Hey, Bridge family, man, I am excited to be with you all today. Those of you here in Spring Hill, uh, Columbia, we're so pumped to be with you and everybody online and inviting us into your home. Hey, right now, wherever you're at, can we just show everyone how excited we are to be here today? Come on, come on. Some of y'all are excited, I love it. I love it. Hey, if we've never met before, my name is Charlie. I'm the pastor of our Columbia location. So if I don't look familiar to you here or, or online, that's why I'm normally in Columbia. But it is a joy to be with you today, bringing the word. And a little disclaimer before we get going. Today, I am preaching to myself. Here's what I mean is, I think sometimes what we do is we show up and we think that the, the pastor on stage kind of has it together or at least at bare minimum, they've got the concept they're teaching down a little bit. Well, today I wanna to confess to you that that is absolutely not true, especially with this word today. For me, the Lord has been moving and wrestling in my heart. And so if I seem too passionate, it's because I'm talking to me. But my prayer is that God would be speaking to you because at the end of the day, this is his word. And so I, I hope that you are here to hear from the Lord as well. And so uh, if you've got your Bibles with me, uh, go ahead and open to Luke 1, verse 45. That's where we're gonna start. Uh, but before we jump in, I just wanna pray for us today. God, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for loving us and caring for us. Lord, I pray that you would show us what to do and that you would speak to us today right where we are. God, we love you so much and you love us so much more. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Well, in case you didn't know, Christmas is right around the corner here in just a few days. And so for all the men in the room, you better hurry up and get your significant other something because I know you haven't started shopping, okay? Uh, to all the kids in the room, uh, your parents don't want a gift, they want obedience. It's free to them and blesses them more than you know. Uh, I can say that again if you didn't take notes. They want obedience. So uh, write that down to all the women in the room. Well, you have nothing left to do because you're always on top of everything. Congratulations, okay? <laughs> I hope my wife heard that. But they are always on top of everything. So, man, Christmas is full of so much, isn't it? Uh, all the lights. Uh, in our house, we've drank about 35 gallons of hot chocolate since Monday. And so, I mean, we are going through it. We, all the Christmas songs that never end. All the Christmas movies that never end. And it's just so exciting, all the great things that, that Christmas brings and all the, the fun traditions. Uh, for me, and when I was a kid, I remember one of those was we'd gather and hear the Christmas story. My dad would always grab this massive Bible that's like three feet wide. I don't even know why you have it. And he'd read the, the Christmas story and it was always special. And not just there, I remember we'd always hear it in Christmas plays, uh, maybe at the school or church or something. And my little kids are actually, two of our oldest are here with me today. Uh, we had a Christmas play at their school. They can come on out. I think they're gonna join us. They should be here somewhere. But uh, they had a Christmas play at their school and they dressed up as, as Mary and Joseph. Oh, come on. Woo, give them a round of applause. Don't they look incredible? Oh my goodness. <laughs> So they got to be a part of this uh, Christmas play at school. And, and we got to hear the Christmas story told, you know, sweet little Mary, so happy and full of joy and life. And Joseph, this incredible man, hard worker, going to the beautiful vacation town of Bethlehem, where they're gonna have a baby, which is always so calm and comforting and joy filled. All you parents in the room know this. And the story is just sweet. It's magical. It's honestly fun to hear the birth of the Savior. You guys are awesome. You can go. I love y'all so much. Come on. <laughs> the story is magical. But the more we get into it, the older you get, you probably realize the story maybe wasn't all as magical as we thought it was. I mean, last week we heard about the birth of Jesus in a manger. And, and if you've ever been pregnant, you know between finding out you're pregnant and birth is a lot of things that happen. I mean, I have questions, you know. How was Mary's pregnancy? Did her ankle swell? Did she get morning sickness? I mean, it's the birth of Jesus. Like, was it a magical pregnancy or one that was still kind of difficult? And pregnancy brings its challenges, but more than that, the hardest part of this story, the darkest, most broken parts of the story, we don't talk about as much. You know, Mary would have been in a really tough place at this time. She found out she was pregnant while she's engaged to a man who lives a few towns over. 
And Joseph isn't some important person. He's a simple day laborer. Like she would have been in a very tough place. Culturally, getting pregnant like this was a massive thing. She would have been outcast for the rest of her life. She would, she would have been accepted at, at church, at social gatherings. She would have nowhere to belong. And she knew this. She knew what was coming with the weight of this pregnancy. And remember, Joseph has not talked to any angels yet. He has no idea what's happening. And on top of this, they're at the very bottom of the social class. They were as poor as poor gets. In Jewish law, there was a custom that when your first child was born, you'd offer a sacrificial lamb. And there was only one exception. There was only one way not to do this. And it's if you were so poor, you'd offer two turtle doves. They would have cost less than a penny. See, they had absolutely nothing. It's not like they could fall back on his job or their wealth or, or how they would be seen in society. Everything they knew would have been crumbling. And to explain it all, her answer would have been, God did this. Girl, are you crazy? No one's going to believe that God did this to you. God blesses people. God cares for people. He, he provides for them, right? God did not do this. It's, that's how it would have been felt. And I want you to think about this for just a second. In her darkest, scariest, most chaotic moments, God brought her there. I think what we have a tendency to do in those, those dark times is we look and say, God, where are you at? But what if it's the exact opposite? What if God intentionally, strategically brought you exactly to where you are in the most confusing moment because he wanted to do something? See, it wasn't an absence of God. It was absolutely his presence that brought her here. And it's from this moment, in this dark place, in this confusing time that she'll begin this that we're about to read. So we're gonna pick up in Luke chapter one, verse 46. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my savior, for he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his offspring forever. Mary begins to sing. She begins to sing a song in this dark place. I would have, I would have sang it to you, but I didn't want you to leave. And so, but Mary begins to sing. There is something stirring up within her about the goodness of God. She knows that even though life may look dark, there's a truth that she's missing. There's something that the Lord is doing. So she begins to declare this in song. And I don't think this is just a song for Mary. I told you in the beginning, I think this is a song for me. And I believe it's a song for you as well. See, Mary in this passage is, is pointing to what God is doing. So for the remainder of our time, I just want us to jump into the passage to see what she's saying and how honestly it can change how we are today. So let's jump back to the top. Verse 46, and Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my savior, for he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. We see the way that Mary is using her words. She is trying to get us to understand that God is in the present, the past and the future of all of this chaos. She's pointing to the exact moment. She said, I magnify him now. I rejoice in him now. But not only that, she's looking back to where he's been and forward to where he's going. God was in every bit of this moment and she knew it. She knew that God was doing something. And not just here, all throughout scripture. Every time we see people in, in extremely difficult or dark moments, we see God. Think about it. God was in the lion den with Daniel, having a conversation, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Right there in the furnace was God. Jesus in the middle of a raging storm in an ocean, God was with him. And for us Christians in the room, we're like, well, duh. 
God's everywhere. We know that God is, is absolutely always present. But what I think we often miss and need to grow in is that in these moments, the people rested and worshiped God. It's not just understanding that God is there, but it's resting and worshiping where we're at. We're guilty of using this bottom up mentality, not bottoms up. That's a whole nother sermon for our Saturday night services, <laughs> bottom up <clears throat> mentality. That what we do is we look at our situation, our feelings, our brokenness, and we reflect those onto God. We look and say, man, whatever I'm going through, that's the way God feels or sees me. And so what we do is we say, I lost my job. Thanks for nothing, God. I'm losing my family. I thought this was important to you, God. Failing your classes, way to care for your children, God. Stock market, your retirement start to plummet. Really, God, after all these years, this is how you repay me. We look at what we feel and that is how we worship. Or at least sometimes, how often our problems just dictate our praise. And I know this is true for me. I know it is. This week, on Monday, I stood in the kitchen with my wife as our children were getting ready for school. And, and we, were, we were just talking about what the Lord has done this year. Or better yet, what, what I felt the Lord has not done. As we look back at the past week, month, and all of 2020, I, I was just standing there broken going, man, I used to feel like God was doing something. I used to feel like things were happening. I'm like, God, where are you at? How come it doesn't seem good? Like, God, why aren't you present? Why aren't you in this moment? Why only the last one? God, where are you? And what I was doing is I was allowing my feelings to reflect on the Father. And there is an appropriate time to lament before the Lord and cry out with your burdens and pains, but that was not all I was doing. My fear and feelings were leading my faith. I was wanting something different than I had. And, and I'm not going through anything crazy. Not, not other than 2020. I mean, outside of that, life's not that crazy. Not like Mary crazy. I mean, she is pregnant from God. No one believes her. She's losing everything. Man, what a mess she found herself in. And she wasn't standing in the kitchen wondering where God was. She stood there and worshiped. She began to sing and declare the goodness of the Lord. I think the first thing we all need to realize is that God is right here in the middle of this moment. He's not just in last year and he won't just be in the next year. He's right here, right now. He's not missed it. He is present. Even if you don't feel it, he is absolutely present. And we might hear this and go, well, that, that sounds great. But we don't receive it because we have this idea that it's not for everyone. I mean, Mary, of course, she gets it. Right? She's God's chosen one. She's carrying the baby. Jesus, the son of God, of course, she gets something different. I mean, she even says, people will look at me as blessed from generations on. Like she recognized there was something special happening. But that's not all that she says. Mary continues to sing, and his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. She goes, no, it's not just for me. It's not something special that I received. She said, you need to see that the same mercy is offered for you today. She said, it's, it's for absolutely every one of you. It's not that Mary was the chosen one. It's, it's something that God has given to all. And I love this other translation. It says, his mercy flows like wave after wave on those in all before him. And I think sometimes we see fear God and we're like, yeah, he's, he's scary. I'm afraid of him. That's not it. God is not saying to be afraid of him. It's to stand in reverence and all realizing who he is. I don't know about you, but after this year, I just need to sit down and let the waves of God's mercy wash over me. As I think about the waves, man, if you stand in the ocean, they don't stop. Wave after wave after wave, they continue to wash over you. Man, as many of us who've been Christians for a while, what we have a tendency to do is show up when our cup feels empty. Hey, God, let me get a little mercy. This month was tough. Then we move on for the next few months. And then we lose a job. Well, God, let me get a little bit of mercy. He's saying, no, just stay here. Just be here wave after wave and not be afraid. Looking at God as a God of love and care. He, he wants to heal, not to hurt. God wants to be there in all of these moments. One of my favorite things I do as a pastor is getting to hear stories of how God is working. About eight months ago, I sat down with a, a young couple in Colombia and 
they began to share with tears on their cheeks and broken hearts how they were kind of done. The marriage wasn't going to work out, that life was falling apart, and nothing was the way it was supposed to be. They were just at the end of the rope. So I prayed with them and encouraged them and continued to pray for them. And, and last week, eight months later, I sat down with them, and but it was a totally different world. Both of them with joy and laughter and a lightheartedness began to share that God was redeeming and restoring what was broken. They began to share that they had a hope that they hadn't known before. They talked about how God was restoring things that they felt like they had lost. And I simply asked them, like, what was so different? And they, they declared that daily they would ask God for his mercy. They had finally come to the place where they realized they couldn't do it. And they just said, we just humbly came and said, God, we need you. Give us your mercy every single day. And she said, through the Lord, they are in progress far from divorce in a healing, restoring marriage. How many of us hear this story? And that's exactly what we want. We look at our own stories and go, yeah, my marriage is at the end too. I don't know what to do with my children. They just don't seem to listen. And my job is falling apart. My health is fading. We have this list of things we wish to be restored. And we're like, God, we, I want that mercy. I need your goodness, but still not convinced it's for me. So we want this, but don't know how to get it. And I don't know about you, but for me, I feel like, okay, I, I'm ready. I want to go to the Lord. I need this. Let me clean myself up a little bit. Let me make sure I'm presentable and ready and like at least get some of my act together and, and then show up and present myself asking for mercy from the Lord. No, that's not it though. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He's filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. See, what I have to understand, what we need to understand is God doesn't need strength, but weakness. I know I want to bring the, the things that I can offer to the Lord to the front. And God's saying, that's not it at all. Mary declares this and she's pointing to scripture, Old Testament, because we see all throughout the Bible that God would destroy entire nations that were proud. We see mighty rulers of, of major empires fall because they are unwilling to follow and listen to the Lord. People of talent and skill are removed from position. And we see God give opportunity to undeserving person after the next over and over because he honors the humble. He wants to work in the weakness and they're willing to listen and follow the Lord. I mean, some of you might have a tendency to go, well, I'm good, I'm poor. And he's not talking about money. As a matter of fact, in the, in the original language, it would say, it referred to as pios poor, which would be those who just recognize their need. We have Americanized scripture and we're like, well, I'm poor, so I'm good. Or, or I'm rich, so man, what do I do now? That's not it. God simply wants to know, do you recognize your need for a savior? Honestly, I don't know what to do in this moment. In hearing these words other than stop and just say, God, I'm sorry. God, I'm sorry. I am as guilty as they come of wanting to bring my talents to the front. I want to be in a situation where I can show up and show out and, and be, be proud of what I'm doing. I want to honor the Lord with my gifts. It's not for me, but I want to be in control. I want to use the gifts and the strengths that the Lord has given me. And weakness? No, thanks. That's terrifying. If I'm dependent on the Lord and my weakness, what if he's not there what if he doesn't show up? He'll take care of my family. Who will do what I do? Like, I do not want to be in this place. I want to use my strengths. And, and I worry because what if, what if when I do present my weakness and my brokenness to the Lord, it's not enough? What if I reveal all that I am and God's like, oh yeah, maybe not. Maybe there's too much there. Maybe you're not enough. And so what I do is I work as hard as I can to, to show that I've got something worthy of it. And all this time, the Lord's looking and going, I don't want your strength. I want your weakness, your brokenness, the places that you hurt. And many of you, you know what I'm saying because you lay awake in bed at night thinking and dreading the broken parts of your life. Maybe not even sharing with your spouse or, or someone in your bridge group and you do life completely alone. Man, if people knew how 
depressed I was or anxious I was or broken I was, they wouldn't be here. God wouldn't be here. And you sit in those same moments as me, trying to polish your strength so that you can be accepted, cared for, and loved by the Lord and, and people around us. And God says, that's not it. I don't want your strength. I want your weakness. And I find myself stuck here. I get this truth. I, I know it's real, but what if? But what if, what if I show who I am and God's not there? What if he doesn't move on my behalf? I imagine Mary felt this. In these moments, God, you got to do something. No one in this world believes me. No one in this world trusts me. No one in this world thinks I'm worthy of anything. Lost and broken and hopeless, she came to the Lord. She said, God, how do I know I trust you? Because. Because he has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his offspring forever. She said, God, I see that you have done something before. You made a promise. She said, this isn't random. I didn't happen into this dark place. It's not a coincidence that I sit here with nothing to offer the Lord. All along the way, God had made promises of what was to come, a son that would change the world. And Mary said, I know this because God will keep his promises. I believe this. I declare this because God will keep his promises. He promised that Israel would be the nation that people would follow. He promised that Abraham would father all these children. He promised. And Mary said, in these promises is where I declare this to the Lord. And, and we look at this. And we're like, that's amazing. But God didn't promise that to me. God didn't promise me Israel and Abraham. I'm not a part of that. True. But here's what he promised to you. God has promised you are free in Jesus, Romans 8. God has promised tomorrow will take care of itself, Matthew 6. God has promised to give you strength when you're weak, Isaiah 41. God has promised you will rest, Matthew 11. God has promised peace in him, John 16. God has promised his goodness and mercy for all of your days, Psalms 23. God has promised his plans for us are good, Jeremiah 29. God has promised to work all things together for good, Romans 8. God has promised grace in our time of need, Hebrews 4. God has promised to never leave you, Hebrews 13. God has promised to give power to the weak, Isaiah 40. God has promised to return again, John 14. Man, it's a dark year and dark moments, but God has promised and God will fulfill his promises. We know this to be true. So like Mary, many of us sit in this moment in the darkness of all that we felt in the chaos, the confusion and the brokenness. And now we have an opportunity to offer a song. We see that Mary and in the darkest moments, she used theology to speak to her biology that became her doxology, right? What she knew of God became real inside of her and it came out in her song. We have an opportunity to respond. And, and whether you realize it or not, all year long, you've been singing a song. There are a few different groups of people in here today. And we all have a song that we've been singing. I don't know about you, but my uh, social media a couple weeks ago was full of Spotify top 10 songs of the year. Everyone was sharing all these songs of hope and joy and, and laughter and all, the, all these things, these good, positive songs. But if the playlist of your soul songs was published, would you still feel the same way? Would you share it so that all your friends would see how you felt, what you've declared? Uh, honestly, we've been doing that how we act and how we respond. And some of you today, the song you need is the fact that God is with you. He's for you right now. You've never known that. You've never felt that. You've never received that because you've been so busy trying to get everything together for the Lord and, and you've missed it, especially this time of year, right? We're about to gather with family. Like I need to make sure my mom and dad, they're proud of me. 
that they know that my kids behave and I'm doing a good job at work and I'm successful and, and all these things. I need to make sure that my life looks pretty because everyone else is. So let me make sure I get it together. And it's time just to rest in the waves of the Lord and realize His mercy is for you. Wave after wave from generation to generation, not based on what you bring, but what you do not have. And that's a savior. You need a savior. Others, we need to adjust the song we've been singing. See, at at times we are declining with our culture, what we declare with our message. We declare that God is good. God is for people, that God cares, but that is not how we live our lives. What kind of song comes out of your heart when you're faced with the confusing, scary, broken moments? Do people know more of your opinions on politics and masks than the gospel? Because sadly for me, maybe this year they do. Unfortunately, there are many moments I look back at this year and think I could have sang a better song. I could have pointed to Jesus better. I could have worshiped a God worthy so much better. But the good news of today, no matter where you are, what group you fall into, the promises of God are for you right now. You don't need to do anything. God wants to offer you all of these things in Him. My encouragement to you, my encouragement to me as we wrap up this year, will we adjust what we're singing? When we invite our neighbors to church, will they be excited to come because they know there's something different about us? The people that that follow us online, will they realize there's something more important in our life than 2020? Will they know the goodness of the Lord on how we live? And for those of you that have never felt this, today is the moment. The Lord wants to, to give you this. Let's pray together. God, we need you. God, we need you to show up and move. God, I'm so sorry for all the moments I've brought my own strengths before you when you wanted me exactly where I was, broken, flawed, and messy. God, I pray that everyone right now hearing this, that you would just continue to wash over us with the waves of mercy Lord, would you give us what we need for these moments? Lord, even if it's dark, even if all hope feels lost, you are still good. God, may our songs declare the goodness of you, the goodness of your son and and what he gave for us on the cross for our sins. God, as we invite people to church, as we tell people about your love, would they hear your voice? God, would they know how much you care by the way we live our lives? God, thank you for caring for us. Thank you for loving us. God, we love you so much and you love us so much more. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Well, hey, thank you so much for watching the Bridge Church YouTube channel. We're so glad you joined us. We hope that you felt the welcome home of Christ right for your screen. Um, Here at the Bridge, we believe that the gospel is good news worth sharing. And so we'd love for you to subscribe to our channel, to share on social media, and you can tag us at at BridgeChurchTN. That's at BridgeChurchTN. And if you'd like to give to this ministry, you can do so by clicking the link in the description of the video. Hey, once again, thank you so much for joining us. If you want to find out more information about the Bridge Church, you can go to bridge.tv. That's bridge.tv, and we hope to see you here soon.